Hello everyone, it's Felicia with Dear World Traveler and I've been living in Paris for about a year now. Since moving here, I've gotten a lot of questions about the process to getting a French visa. Because of that, I thought it would be good to do a video going over just that, how to get a French visa. To start off, if you live in the US, you don't need a visa to go to France for less than 90 days. So you're perfectly fine to go on a quick vacation to Paris or any other part of France without a visa. If you are not a US resident, you'll need to check the visa requirements for your home country. For those of you that want to visit France for more than 90 days, you'll need to apply for a visa. And you may be wondering, okay, so what if I go to France and I stay for a long time, more than 90 days? What's going to happen if I don't have a visa? If you go to France and stay longer than 90 days and you're caught without a visa, you could be banned from the country for like 10 years. Okay, for me, I love pears and croissants way too much to take that risk, so I chose the route of getting a visa. But let's take a look at how you can apply for a visa. In general, there are three types of visas. A work visa, a student visa, and a tourist visa. For a work visa, I'm sure you get the gist. It allows you to legally work in France. Oftentimes, companies outside of France will sponsor a work visa for existing employees to work in France. A student visa is pretty self-explanatory. This is for anyone going to school in France that isn't a French citizen. Next up is a tourist visa. I'll spend the remainder of this video focusing on this. In particular, the long stay visa. It's required to stay in France for more than 90 days, it's valid for one year, and you must apply and be approved before leaving the US. I'm from the States, so I'll be speaking of the requirements as it relates to US citizens. As much as I would love to be an expert on visas, I'm not. So if you are not a US citizen, you should check with the local French consulate in your country to see what the requirements are. Okay, back to the application process. First, decide on the date you want to arrive in France. This will be the start of your visa period if your visa is approved. Second, look up the nearest French consulate to your home. One thing to note, there may not be a French consulate in your city or state, so you may have to travel to the French consulate that serves your region. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia before moving to Paris and luckily the French consulate was located in the city of Atlanta. That same consulate also served six other states in the southeast region. So just do a quick Google search to see where the local French consulate is for your state. Once you've found your local French consulate, review the requirements for a long stay visa. The requirements can vary at each consulate so pay close attention. Next, you'll need to make an appointment with the French consulate. The appointment date must be made one to three months prior to your expected departure date. And appointment slots can often fill up, so reserve it as soon as possible. You'll then need to prepare your application and supporting documents before your appointment. Here's a list of the documents I submitted. An application form. This can be found on the French consulate website my passport and two copies of the identification pages, two passport photos, proof of accommodation. For this, you can simply include a copy of your rental agreement or lease, an airline reservation. For this, we used a website called travelvisabooking.com to reserve our flight since most airlines won't allow you to reserve a flight for an extended amount of time. And since we weren't sure how long it would take for us to get a response on our visa, we wanted to make sure the reservation didn't expire. So when you're applying for a visa, it specifically states or it stated for me that we could not book the flight, it just needed to be reserved. Um, I guess that's in case your visa's denied, they want to make sure you don't have a flight there. Not sure, but we used a different service to reserve the flight and included a copy of that reservation in our application. You'll also need proof of medical insurance, proof of funds, copies of your bank statements from the last three months are good for this. You're not allowed to work in France on a tourist visa, so it's important that you're able to show that you have enough money to support yourself. A letter of employment. For this, I reached out to the HR department at the company that I worked with at the time, and I was able to get a document that showed that I was an employee, what my position was, and what my salary was. I know some of you may be concerned with 
speaking with your supervisor, you may not necessarily want to share that you're trying to get a visa. So in that case, you should be able to reach out to your HR department um, to just get some form of documentation showing that you are employed and where you're employed. For anyone applying with their spouse, you'll need to include your marriage certificate, a letter of intent, and status in the U.S. For the letter of intent, I typed up a document in Word where I stated that I was seeking a visa to learn more about the French culture and to document my experiences on my travel blog. I also stated that I would not be working in France, I would not be seeking employment in France, and that particular piece is very important when you are applying for a visa. Part of having a tourist visa is you cannot have a job in France or work with a French company. So when you are filling out that document, make sure you put that one line in there that you will not be working with the French company. And the idea behind this is that they don't want tourists coming over to their country, taking jobs away from their citizens. For the status in the U.S., I typed up a separate document where I simply stated that I, Felicia Munn, am a citizen of the United States. That was it. <laughs> Lastly, you'll need a self-addressed envelope and you'll need to pay an application fee of $115. The French consulate will mail your visa and passport back to you in the self-addressed envelope that you provide, so don't forget to include that. Also, you'll need to pay the application fee in either cash or money order, so make sure you are prepared for that. For your proof of accommodation in France, your letter of intent, and your status in the U.S., you'll also need French translations of those documents in addition to having them in English. You'll also need two copies of each document to submit with your application. I promise the hardest part of this process is getting all these documents together. It could take a few weeks to get all the documents together, so it's very important to stay organized. To keep things in order, I created a folder within my Google Drive and labeled it Visa Documents. Within that folder, I created a separate folder for each document that we needed as part of the application process. And as we got files and got our things together, I dropped those files within the folder on the Google Drive. Once we had everything together, I printed everything out and put them in a physical folder in the order that the items were listed on the French Consulate website. Once you have all your application documents, check to make sure you have everything. Then check again. There will be a lot of documents floating around your house. Next, go to your scheduled appointment at the French Consulate and turn in your application documents. This part was super simple. I was very anxious leading up to our appointment day. I thought, that we were going to be interviewed, that we were probably going to be interrogated, that I may need to know French. Actually, none of that happened. It was very easy when we got to the French consulate. My husband and I turned in our documents. They asked us a few questions just to make sure all our documents were there. They asked us in English, so we spoke in English, and took our fingerprints, and that was it. It was really easy. We were in and out in less than an hour. If everything goes well and your visa is approved, you'll receive your visa in the mail. About six weeks after we submitted our application, we received our passport and our visa in the mail in the same self-addressed envelope that we provided. And that was it. No one contacted us in between time. Chris actually had an international trip for about a week during the time that our visa application was being reviewed. And since we lived fairly close to the French consulate, he was able to go pick up his passport, go on his trip, and all he had to do was return it to the French consulate when he got back in town. So we may have gotten a response sooner if we didn't have that slight delay. All right, so there are only a few more steps in this process, so hang in there and don't stop the video just yet. Within 90 days of arriving in France, you'll need to mail in a residency form that was provided with the application. A few weeks later, you'll receive an email and or a letter to your residence in France with instructions on taking a medical exam and making an appointment with the residence office. You'll also need to pay a residence fee of 250 euros per person. Somehow we didn't know about this residency fee before moving to Paris, so we were a little surprised when we found out we had to pay it. Aside from being surprised, it was an online payment and it wasn't a hassle. So don't forget that part so you can make sure you budget for it. Once you've chosen your appointment times, you'll need to get a medical exam. It's a simple physical, so nothing to worry about. Appointment times and locations will be provided in the letter from the residency office. Finally, the last step. Go to the residence office in France. 
At this appointment, you'll turn in proof of the medical exam you received, proof of accommodation, and a receipt showing that you paid the residency fee. The office will then add another official stamp to your passport to finalize your visa. Okay, that's it. The visa application process is done at this point. I know that was a lot of information, but I hope you found it helpful if you're planning to apply for a visa to France. And I've also posted a blog post on DearWorldTraveler.com with the same information, so you can easily reference it later. The link to that post is included in the description of this video. To summarize, here's one more look at the steps you need to take to apply for a French visa. Determine the date that you want to get to France and look up the nearest French consulate to you. Once you've found a consulate near you, review the visa requirements and make an appointment. As you wait for your appointment date, prepare the applications and check your documents. When you go to your appointment, turn in your application documents and pay your application fee. Your application will be reviewed over the next few weeks and if everything goes well, you receive your visa in the mail. Once you're in France, you'll have to complete your residency requirements and then you're done. You're free to enjoy France for a year. One more thing, the YouTube algorithm can be a beast sometimes, so like this video if you found it helpful so that it can show up in the feed of other people that may be seeking this information. If you're new here, subscribe to this channel so you can see more travel content and videos just like this one. Thanks for watching this video, good luck to anyone that's applying for a French visa. You got this, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.